eight a month. And uh, then all these little blogs or names, like for Ken and I, we've got the alliedcommand.org. So, Ken, that's just a website where we can put whatever it is that we want to write about, you know, your history, Don's history. But then somebody's got to put it in the computer and post it. And I'm a webmaster for that. And I use WordPress. Now, this Chant Hannah girl had a free one. And how you can tell folks, and this is all education, is uh, with our allied command, we're going to be smarter about what we're putting into the computers because people want to be not fake news, but they're fake news. Okay, <laughs> They don't know they're fake news, but she doesn't have any credentials. Uh, she wouldn't even tell me what her phone number was because she didn't have one. She couldn't tell me her IPC or where her computer was because she didn't have one. How am I supposed to check somebody out? And I'm just a normal businesswoman. She couldn't go down to the Days Inn or Navarre uh, Civic Conference Center where I am, where we have our conferences, and get in without, you know, she'd have to apply for a job. So people get on LinkedIn, put your data information, put your history, L-I-N-K-E-D-N. That's where we go and look at your professional uh, profile. Now, Facebook is just a, what it says, a face. Book. That's all it was meant to be, and I'm sure most of y'all know the the story on that. And of course, billions invested, and it became a public corporation and is traded on the stock market. And they run basically on us giving them free information, and then they sell advertising to the bigger companies. And then they got hold of it. And then uh, Ken, did you get a message? I got a message that my stuff was stolen by some company. And they sent me uh, uh, information and apologized to me. It made the the news, and you know this guy went before Congress about it, and he was grilled about it. And then they still turn around and ask him to help, and that's okay because we understand Facebook is pretty much the Cadillac. I get what would you call it, Ken? That's where you go. You find out information, but a lot of it's oh, fake well. news. Well, that's just it, and and people need to do their own uh, research and check into things and and uh, vetting it out for sure because there's just so much false information and and actually it's interesting mm-hmm. how certain people do get uh, blocked from being able to use Facebook. But if you take the the reality standpoint that you know that's really interesting, I think I'll check that out and do it and check it out and find out for yourself. That way you won't be you won't be debunked or, or you won't be uh, lied to and used as a pawn. And nobody wants to be used as a pawn necessarily. I don't think I so. think she and Hannah, just, whoever this girl was, she, I think her intentions were good, and she's like me. She thinks she's helping people, but she got lost in the needing to prove who she was first. So you got to let your own mask down in that jet you're flying in high, calling yourself – uh, UFO investigator, you better want to prove who you are first and walk your talk, lady. There you go. <laughs> because there you go. I do, and I'll take on anybody. And nobody has to know that I was a big legal investigator because it scares them, Chant, whoever you are. But if you want to know, I'll take you on any time, any place, any day, and compare your credentials to mine. And uh, you know, I represent. Myself and I've asked Ken Johnston, but you trashed me pretty bad to Ken, and he shared that with me. So, lady, you better hope I never find out who you really are, because we're going to go to journalism Fist City, <laughs> whatever that is, <laughs> I, in our invisible I think college. Is about as clear as you could possibly be. I don't think anybody should misunderstand what you mean by that. If you're going to tell the truth, okay, well, tell the truth. You, you and James Oberg, right? You have that same feeling now, right? I've never had anybody yep. do that to me. So why is this yeah. happening? It can only be, folks, the reason that I've created this show, Invisible College for Ira Pastor. And he said he liked it, so something must have happened uh, to him. Or maybe he didn't know it was going to be tonight, so maybe next Friday or, yeah, he'll come on. But he had liked so uh, something must have happened for Ken, but Ken will leave Ira's name on here because he is one of our ACO visionaries. He's very bright, and he will come and help us. But, you know, you and I are proving – let me tell you, I had to pass a test in, in journalism uh, not to read the news. I used to rip and read what they called it in the news industry for radio shows in Birmingham, Alabama. 
uh, well, I was going to college, so that's when I did my radio. But I was in television when I was a child, KNOE, with James A. No. So people can vet me all they want. But I've been in television, and I've been in When Will I Be Loved with Stephanie Powers. They used my showroom in the Atlanta Apparel Mart on the show. Uh, I guess she was sort of like me, my story. But that was Stephanie Powers, and I was in the television show called When Will I Be Loved? with Stephanie Powers, basically playing me in the beauty industry, I guess yeah, you'd say, I, I, or the I apparel about that industry. Yep. Really? See, I'm, I'm, too, I'm two years older than you, so I was around to see that, you bet. Pretty sure. Wow. Well, my husband it, and it I were both bell. in it for hours. Yeah, and wow. uh, Atlanta Apparel Mart, I had Jungle Beach mm-hmm. and J.B. Cork, and I paid a contract there, very expensive. I think it was like 3600 a month and 5000 a month, and the uh, wow. L.A. Apparel Mart, or uh, let's see, there was the Merchandise Mart in L.A. Was it L.A. Apparel yeah. Mart? You, you, uh, you'll remember, you, you know, you'll remember the Oklahoma, um, no, the the American Bandstand, I'm sure, and Oklahoma. Oh had yeah. Its own version Oklahoma Bandstand. Well, I was with a, a rock and roll um, a team, um, and I was uh, one of the the primary singers for the um, Jaguar um, rock and roll band. And I was one of the guest guest singers and band on the Oklahoma Bandstand. How about that? <laughs> wow! So you could sing too. You can. Or I, well, I, I used yeah, to could sing anymore. I don't think. A long time ago. A long time ago. <laughs> a long yeah. time ago. Well, you know, it's going to take all of our energy to express the various levels that we live in across the universe and various uh, spacecraft that is orbiting. What, well, regardless of what we know, it is. And uh, I'll be more than happy, folks, to have you share with us your stories. And uh, the reason we were asking for $5 a month is actually to help pay us for creating what we're going to create about you and putting our energy in. The, we can cut and paste if you want to share your photos and biographies and history and put it all in one place to be archived as a professional author or a professional journalist, journalist or professional videographer or just whatever you felt like you did your life for and uh you know that's what the five dollars was for because people want to do all this free in social media but you can't trust it and i want to know who i'm talking to and who i'm vetting or who i'm who says they're a professional who says they're well, a that's, ufologist you know, that's where she was going after you and and claiming you know all kinds of things about how you were demeaning uh, people and, and stuff like that, which was absolutely insane. And uh, so I, it, it, it's sad to, to – and I'm glad, to, glad that you're actually stepping up here and, you know, putting nose to nose so you're ready for battle. <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't want to go up against you. That's the reason I'm going to stick with the truth, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I people you can side. have their thoughts. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, the reason is, folks, is – Everybody can say anything they want to. That is America. That is freedom of speech. But right. if you want to be a journalist, you need to back it up. You know. And I like to get two sides in the truth, or at least in the government likes you to have three bids at least. Okay, I know because I worked in actually in accounts payable, and we check the contracts explicitly. So, you know, people can talk all they want trash about the government, but when we get too big for our britches as individuals and we go and we tell people, you know, you got to do this or you got to do that, well, we get together and we join together in peer groups and associations and we maybe have businesses and unfortunately some people some businesses including Walmart all over the world and McDonald's and stuff they have to have corporations. They have to have uh, guidelines and boundaries. And we realize that, and I have worked country to country. I've worked with people all over the planet. I've been out of country many times, and I'm too old to be traveling. I don't like traveling. I get used to get in tears traveling from Hawaii to L.A. to New York to Spain or to U.K., Back, you know, it's hard on your body, and then okay, it's sure. really tough. Yeah. Hey, so I'd like to uh, this, clear up one thing go ahead. again real fast here, and that is, you, bet. you know, because, um, oh, I, I've had uh, people say, oh, you were, you're an astronaut. I said, I was not a NASA astronaut. And that's the same thing with Oberg. He goes, oh, he, he never was an astronaut. I said, wait a minute. 
I was one of the four civilian astronauts with the Grumman Corporation, and we tested it in the vacuum chambers, which was just as actually more more of a vacuum than it is on the lunar surface. I'll tell you that. 10 to the minus 12 tour for those scientists out there that want to know how much of a vacuum we pumped it down to. Anyway, so here's here's the truth. Path is I am one of the I was one of the four civilian astronauts. I didn't say NASA astronauts, but that's where they go out and he, he says, oh, he lies about this. He's lying. About, no, I've always come forward and said I was a civilian astronaut, consultant pilot with the Grumman Aerospace Corporation that tested our lunar module and made it safe, and then helped added in and helped train the regular NASA astronauts. We had to be one of us available anytime one of the NASA astronauts came to get inside the command module or the lunar module, like Don had to be in the command module to answer questions that astronauts would have about what their, their command module was going to be like. And I was one of them that, was, that would have to be inside the lunar module. That's why I spent nearly 1,000 hours inside the lunar module LTA-8 in vacuum chamber B at the Johnson Space Center way back in 1967. 1968, when we were getting ready to uh, make our first uh, first flight to the moon. So the answer, answer is, yes, I was an astronaut. I was a civilian astronaut with the Grumman Corporation. So I always want to be sure that I, I'm, I've been recorded, and that's down solid. So if you hear anybody claiming that I'm claiming I'm this or that, you can tell them, you know, go wash their hands and get their, 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 get their head screwed on straight. They're out there well, we'll to, get some to testimony some too to put on. We'll get testimony from Don Garrett and uh, anybody else out there. And actually, I think Oberg, even though he's got all this stuff on the internet, even if we say you've got to prove what's out there that's written, you know, he still that, would have that would to be nice. prove credentials now. And just there like you go. Homeland Security, going to a state and. I, I transferred, and I know what you got to do. Now, I may have given up my commercial driver's license because I don't need it anymore at my age, and <laughs> that's a rough life. But I did that in and out of government facilities, and because I had clearances, I had to pull some in, in places or in the mountains. Or, I've been a lot of places, folks, and uh, it's hard to prove everything driver. I've done. Yeah, I was commercially. I kind of. I kind of got a shake there because my grandson, uh, uh, yeah, Nick, uh, <laughs> Nicholas, Nicholas, um, wow, what am I going blank here? <laughs> He's one of my, my first uh, grandsons. And um, whenever his dad was a um, uh, worked for the, uh, uh, the big truck manufacturing company there in Seattle, and uh, he grew up. I would take him over to spend the weekend with his dad, and we'd look at every truck going by, and I say, "What's the name of that one?" He said, "Well, that's a Peterbilt, so that's a Cummings, or or this or that." And at only three years old, he he could recognize him, and so he grew up loving trucks. And he's a a commercial uh, truck driver. He's working with uh, well, Walmart and several of the others, but he's also a, a an, an instructor, and he uh, he takes students on and takes teaches them how to run the big rigs coast to coast and border to border. So here he is, a young man of only 24 years old, and uh, got to be proud of him. He's got a career, and he's at it. And so, you know, I now I respect you that you were a truck driver, and, I, and it's it's really tough on women who are truck drivers. So you, you I'm proud of you. <laughs> well, you I'm 5'11", 230 pounds, prior military <laughs> trained, a joint trained with the military in Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. I've worn. I've handy? been the woman in black. I don't handle yeah. a weapon now. Uh, reason being, I was trained, and yes, I can use weapons very well. And I was trained in some martial arts, but now I'm 67 years old and don't need any of that. I was trained even no. in another country with a right. weapon, a hand weapon. In Japan, in Yokosuka, Japan. So I'm not go. sure why, but uh, yes, the government trained me in a lot of things. And uh, like I said, Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. And yes, I had all the uniforms. I had a clearance level. I had people come over and tell me I had a barbecue clearance. I've been told I had a higher clearance than a Royal 14. I've had one as far <laughs> up as you can go. Because anything you do with the kind of work I did in intelligence, even though if you had you had to be on a project with a need to know information and have a right. uh, certain words to get you in and out. Now I, I was not big on going into crypto because I, you know I went with friends that did crypto, but 
you know, I didn't like that kind of work. It was all boring office, and I was like wanting to be in the field. And uh, it's like a bee knocker. I, I don't know what the-